I want to begin with a story, a tremble, a shift, a change. There is breathing, there is shimmering, slow, wet. First ones to arrive could not bear this heat. The quivering moisture gathers on the body like caresses from lovers unknown. This hands, fingers probing soft, sweet, everywhere, everything. George Waitson. In, nine, in 1598, writes of the diseases of the intemperate climate. Drawing from his life as a merchant in Spain, go south, go sick, this flush, this blush amidst the ferns amidst the trees. So much in the wet, hot, green. Whose names do you remember? What taste can you imagine in your mouth? Whose touch can you feel? The tropes of the tropic persist as a colonial specter. It carves time, it carves space, it carves bodies, and reshapes them into instruments, into tools, into commodities. In each breath, in each cry, in each steady shift of land and boundaries. What you imagine of the tropics is what is possible within the tropics. That is to say, nothing and everything. Terra nullius, the unclaimed the unspoiled, the uninhabited by the great white men before us, after us. In retrospective solidarity, out of a mudan offers a word, tropicopolitan. Co-opted from natural history, his formulation proposes the subjectivity of the colonized who has to exist as both fictional construct of the colonial imagination. Brown, strong, ready for the imperial instructionals and as actual residents of the tropical space who are objects of representation but also agents of resistance. As dwellers of the tropics, what do we harbor within us that could not be detached, could not be removed, could not be extracted? What strange deep histories bind us? What pleasures have organized the imperial project? What have survived the empires? Garden, greenhouse, territory, dominion, what could be more tropical than its form before you? Here, an invitation, a proposition, an instigation. Our fruits, which have traveled with us on the currents, on the waves. To know the politics of tasting, a mouth knowledge that cannot be unlearned, the bite and the juice dripping down the side of your mouth. What names do we remember? Basinaria, Maracuya, Farchita, 
Kalala, Chinola, and how many more do we forget lost in the seas? How did you get here? Where will you go? What are we together? What are we apart? Let us sense first, think later. I have nothing to say, only to show. Siempre hay una papaya abierta en un plato sobre el mesón de la cocina de mi mamá. Con un chorrito de limón es un manjar. La papaya del Amazonas es más dulce, como lo recuerdo. A papaya partida, papaya comida. En Colombia lo importante es no dar papaya. La papaya en España no sabe a nada. El jugo de maracuyá es mi favorito, la mezcla perfecta de dulce y ácido. Siempre que vuelvo a Colombia es el primer jugo que me hace mi madre. No se suele comer la fruta sola, excepto en ensalada de fruta de las que solo se consiguen de vez en cuando en la calle. La poma rosa es una de las frutas icónicas de mi infancia. Recuerdo las calles de la ciudad cubiertas con una alfombra del color rosa de los pétalos de la poma rosa, dando paso al fruto. Entre más rápido seas, más poma rosas vas a comer. Tienes que cogerlas en su punto. Ahora que solo vuelvo a casa una vez cada mucho tiempo, no he podido coincidir nunca con la cosecha de poma rosa. La uva caimarona es de mis frutas favoritas del Amazonas. Se puede bajar del árbol o comprar a vendedores ambulantes por todo Leticia. Es muy dulce y jugosa, la textura un poco babosa sin llegar a ser desagradable. Es el mejor snack para dar paseos por la selva.
Thank you.